Okay, so a building in Revit. Here's a wall, just um, with, with no openings in it. And we can put a bunch of openings in it um, with, from the object library. But I've got a wall here, um, and this is just the standard uh, wall type that came with this file. I didn't create it, I just uh, borrowed it from someone else. Again, okay, doing this, as Robin described, in Revit it will work exactly the same way. We, if we've selected that object and we want to activate the object library, it will find things and um, which are of that type. We can also select one of the icons up here, a button, and we'll find every object which has the term wall in it. Now, that may be useful or not useful, depending on how um, objects are described. So you can see here, wall basin, and you might say, that's not helpful for us. Um, but we can then filter the search. Um, also, we have, sometimes people use drop-down menus, and if I flick under here, you can see we've got a range of different options. If I select brick veneer, um, in terms of looking at everything that's a wall, it will find everything that's got brick veneer in it. So, again, it filters the search again. So we've got different ways of going about finding what we want. I've selected one of those wall types. Here's all the, the, uh, the, um, the properties there that Robin has described. Uh, we have things like um, um, QSID, we put in for costing purposes. Because QS is having quite agreed on that, we put in packaging code, trade code, and so on. Uh, we've got omni-class, um, and etc. Different object properties, uh, and we'll go into that, or oh, Robin's covered that already. So again, if we want to insert that into Revit, we go yes, load into Revit, and then it will turn up. So here is this object that I had selected, gone to the object library. It hasn't changed the family, but it's actually upgraded the properties of that existing object. So again, it's added these, these parameters with the values that are in there from the object library. So it may be that you don't want to change the geometry, you just want to upgrade what you have there. Now, this wall here hasn't been changed, but when I've selected that, you can see that all the parameters that came in with the previous wall that were of the same, same family type, the same family and type, um, all these parameters get added with no values because we've only attached those values uh, the, associated with those parameters for that one object previously. But then that's a bit dumb because if you want to change all the external walls, in Revit we can select all the walls, go to the object library, and then we can change them all at once. So here it's we've upgraded them all. Um, and if we want to change the specification of that wall because we want extra data in there, we can select that. And this wall, this individual wall, has now got um, extra data in there because now further down the design process, we actually want to put in specific R value, um, <coughs> density, U value, all those sorts of things. So we can go about upgrading things. No geometry has changed, just the values in behind it. Um, as you can see there, the, the values that we've included with, say, a uh, level of detail or development, 400 wall. Um, and I've grabbed these from the CSR Red Book, again, to show that we can put in any sort of data in there. Um, and so here is, here is the definition of the values um, associated with walls. We can do exactly the same thing with Windows. Um, so in this case, this file here has only got three window families, part of it at the moment. Uh, if we want to, and there they are, those, those three. If we go to the object library and say, let's load a whole bunch of windows. So I can, I can load, say, eight windows at a time, as Robin described, rather than having to go and download individual windows. They're the ones I've got. So I've got two windows of two different sizes, but different levels of, um, of, uh, of detail attached to them. And when we go load, so this, it's, the import is, is um, underway, then uh, if we scroll down here, you can see in terms of the family objects, they are now part of, part of the Revit file. So that's what I asked for, here's what I get. So they're the three that were there originally, and here's the, the other eight added. What's the point of this? Well, as I put these windows in, and you can see all these properties come in, like the walls, I've put the geometry in now, which is also attached to uh, the parameters here. So I've got a new window from the object library, and it's got those, that, that data attached to it. I put a bunch of windows in, and uh, with this, I might go about changing some of the, I might change the window family that it's, um, uh, it's defined by. And so the level of detail, the LOD, has then changed. And 
again, I've changed it to 400, parameters change again. Um, LOD 500 with COBE, as Robin mentioned. There's a lot of gobbledygook that comes in with, with COBE type definitions, and you can see there's a whole range of stuff there. At the moment, I've just included that because to show we can support COBE definitions, whether we actually should or redefine them in, in, in Australian usage, uh, that's another matter which industry would be good to have more um, advice from. Again, with this, I selected an object and I've changed the geometry and I've got different values there. So I've been, I, I can uh, re, re, replace an object with um, the definition from the object library. We can do this for doors in Revit as well. Um, we can also do it for four beams uh, and structural beams. We have a certain amount of uh, parametric nature attached to these. So in this case, we have an icon here we can select on just finding structural things. At our um, drop-down menu, here's a range of different um, object types we can select. In this case, I've selected beam. In our object library, at the moment, we have five beams. I've created these five beams. Three, um, they're exactly the same size, but different data attached to them, and two the same there. So if I select it, here's the geometry. There are the properties at the moment. Very similar format. Um, and I've selected this one. I've downloaded it into Revit, and again, added to the families associated with this, and I've got two different sized objects, and the parameters come in. So there are the extra, uh, so I started, in this file there was a, um, in the standard template, a universal beam, but I've added these timber beams in. And so you can see beams of different sizes. They're parametric in nature that I can change the length of them, but not the cross-sectional, um, uh, cross um, the cross-sectional. So here I've got um, two different sized beams, and the parameters come in with them. So the height and width, so 175 by 50, 200 by 35, that, that data comes in. To show we can actually use these or that they have the same capability inside Revit, I've got a, a structural framing schedule, so two beams, um, and that's slightly wrong in terms of its uh, definition there, my, my bad uh, uh, title there. I've got two different sizes, two different lengths of beams, uh, but then I can stretch this one in, inside Revit and the dimension changes. So you can see those numbers there are different from these. So these um, objects that have come from the object library have, have some parametric nature. Um, we can do the same with columns. In this case, I needed a column inside Revit um, to actually activate the command. So it's just a standard um, you know, universal column. I go to my object library, it finds columns, and I've only got a timber column, 70 by 70 column. Exactly the same process. I select it, I find the thing I like. Um, it's got the geometry attached to it. Here are the properties that come in with that. And again, we've got QS uh, type information, uh, Omni class, and so on. Dimensions attached to that thing. And here is the thing that's been replaced inside Revit. And I've got properties associated with it. Um, and so just to prove it, here's the, uh, the family that's been added to the, the list. And, and the data. Um, I've got a structural column schedule. Um, I had redefined this. This is a little bit wrong, but in terms of process, exactly the same. Uh, we can then, I've duplicated this. I've got two columns exactly the same size, the same length. And then I've gone about changing, the, editing the family inside Revit after it's been included. So I've got two different size geometry derived from the same object I've downloaded. So you can see this is larger in cross section than this one. I've got beams. Uh, the columns the same length, but then also I can change the, the height of these things just in the normal way we would change a, a column inside Revit in defining the, the offset height um, uh, here so that the, the lengths of these things are different. The parametric nature in columns still operates. So this is quite useful for us. As Robin described, we can also use this for sanitary fittings. So here's a, a standard Revit uh, toilet pan. Um, I've gone to my object library and grabbed one which doesn't have a system attached. I've got a range of different properties here that I've grabbed from a product manufacturer. Um, and this is the sort of questions that they would ask if you're trying to specify this thing. And again, I've called this AU Toilet Pan to represent this Australian property set that I've created. And then here is my geometry, which is now different. So here is this object that I've, I've actually included. That geometry I've actually uh, taken from the NBS, the, um, the, the UK database, 
I just grabbing the geometry just to uh, make my life a bit easier along the way. And with this here, are the, all the um, um, uh, data that comes with the uh, property set that comes from from the coding definition. A lot of it, again, you'll see is pretty much gobbledygook. But my Australian property sets that I've added come in there, and there are the values that will be useful for for taking this on. Again, we can use this for other plumbing fittings, not just sanitary fittings. Here's an object I have inside Revit. I, I want to replace it with a with a basin. I know you would not normally do this, but here is a way of going about changing something. Here is some geometry that I have now. Here is my wash basin, uh, pedestal wash basin. I duplicate that thing. I want to have a different one in there. I go to my object library and I go, let's find something like this. A wall mounted one. And then now I have two lots of geometry and I've got two different families inside my object library. As Robin described, we can do it with whole uh, groups of things. So uh, a kitchen there. We can also um, also have whole buildings inside Revit, and if you're a Revit user, you might notice this is a standard uh, file that comes with uh, Revit 2012. And good old Velocervoir, again, is can be one file inside there. Um, one thing we haven't described too much yet is that we have two different user um, profiles. There is just the person who would use it, the, the architect or the uh, person uh, uh, downloading stuff from the object library. We also have the person who's creating this information, and we have a bunch of templates that uh, product manufacturers would use to populate against. So they put their geometry in and arrange it.